Hi, thank you guys, thank you so much. You doctors are particularly skilled. Most doctors are not required to know anything about cannabis or the endocannabinoid system. How do we change that? How do we make it required, continuing, or medical school education? It's a great question. I've been working on it for years. How can we help The you? problem is, I, I was at a big meeting at a university that now has a cannabis research institute in Southern California. And uh, actually someone that was here yesterday who um, was uh, moderating a panel raised her hand. She was at the same meeting and she said, when are we going to incorporate endocannabinoid system education into, and the answer from the guy reading in the way said, the curriculum's full, we don't have time for it. So until we, um, and, and, and so one of the things that I started doing is I started offering just a free lecture to residents and interns at local um, hospitals to try to at least get those guys on board, let them hear about it, let them learn about it. It's a, it's a big problem. 17 years. I only have to make it a law. Well, but I think it's exactly that. I mean, we do the best we can with what we have in the moment. Like, I, I gave a talk on, right. like, Canvas 101, a primary, to 60 family doctors and nurse practitioners in my department, you know, earlier this year. I spoke at the University of New Mexico, um, which was actually one of the first, I think, Canvas symposium put on by a college of medicine. And, and it was New Mexico. I don't know how many people were there. Not, not, not one of them were the state. There were, like, 300 clinicians, nurses. So it's, it's happening. And, yeah, and could be yeah. better, absolutely. It's but not for the lack that the, the yeah. doctor on the ground doesn't want to know. It's that it seems to be that the people creating the curriculum, it's almost like our politicians yeah. creating the laws are not in touch with the people. Yeah, yeah so yeah. that's the reason why I'm on the work again. Yeah. It, it was high time, pun very much intended, that somebody who specialized in the science was at the table when folks were making decisions about the industry, about medicine. I don't know if you all are aware, but our governments are not supposed to influence the practice of medicine. So by virtue of that, it's statutorily, like in Oregon, we're told what conditions we can see patients for. It's, it's really, it should be a law. Um, and I'm waiting for class action lawsuits from our peers to go forth, but we operate in a very peer-based system. Um, so it's gonna begin with peer-to-peer -peer education. Doctors like learning from other doctors. We have to somehow find, and we've never done this before very well, to collectively act in our own, our own favor, right? We, we talk about putting patients first, but how can we put patients first if we're not equipped to do so? Exactly. You know, in Oregon, I still have um, OHSU reporting patients' cannabis use to law enforcement. Talking to our legislators, also talking to our medical boards and nursing boards and other specialty boards, um, and creating a group. We have now the Oregon Cannabis Clinicians Group, which is an intradisciplinary clinicians group. I mean, chiropractors, naturopaths, etc., who care about cannabis as medicine and their right to discuss that information with their patients. And we're going to collectively act and put pressure on our governing agencies to change some of the ways they penalize us, scare us into practicing outside of our best interests. It is my belief that we doctors have a due diligence to, without bias or religiosity about this plant, objectively understand the endocannabinoid system and the pharmacology of cannabis, so that when you come to see us, whether it's like in emergency room or in surgery, where the anesthesiologist very much needs to know if you took it, can make responsible decisions about what to do next with everything else we're trying to recommend for you. So it, we have no excuses. We're beyond that. We can no longer hide behind the veil of prohibition. People are using it now. It is our job as doctors, again, without bias, to take care of the person in front of us. So we're just going to have to be, in, like, inevitably, we're, we're advocates. We have to be by the nature of what we do. Um, so I just hope that, I, I, I know you guys can hear my passion. Yeah. Um, I, I really hope learning the information that we've learned about cannabis, its history as medicine, its history of prohibition, right? The American Medical Association actually went and testified that cannabis be researched in 1937, it was ignored. Um, we've, we've got to be just emblazoned about this and again, collectively have to push this movement even